Welcome to this demo complementing the webinar New Fast Time Domain Simulation Methods for Floating Offshore Wind Substructure Design. We will walk you through some typical usage examples with SESAM. So starting with the coupled analysis in SEMA, and this is the OC4 model with tower and the three mooring lines. In the dynamic tab, we need to enable this export to WASIM option under the storage tab here. Uh, as you can see, we need to select the floater body, which is C mine, and then we select those point forces from three mooring lines or three fairlies and the tower base. Um, this will enable SEMA to write the results files to the body motions, uh, nodal forces, and the wave component in a format that WASIM can understand. This step is required for all three different time domain methods mentioned in this webinar. If you go to condition and explore, then you will see those uh, fires that just uh, generated. Uh, let me check here. We have force, motion, and wave component. Next, in Hydro D, we need to run the radiation and the diffraction analysis. Modeling part, it is similar to a typical Wadham analysis setup. You have the environment settings, you have the properties, models, and the hydro models. Now we come to the analysis part. In the latest version, there is a new option called detailed pressure components. By turning on this option, you will get the required outputs from Wadham for the load reconstruction method. There is no need to select the save um, temporary WAMIT files option. In the Wadham analysis results folder, you will see that we have this .5PD and .5PR files which represent diffraction pressure and the radiation pressure. .GDF and .PNL files they are include the mesh information that is needed. With this output, we can then start setting up the WASIM analysis. In this method, the hydrodynamic pressure reconstruction will be handled by the linear system I just introduced in the webinar. That means the free surface mesh will not be used, which makes the WASIM setup analysis as a dummy analysis. However, for now, HydroD will still check the WASIM setup analysis settings as one of the requirements. So we need to create a dummy setup analysis here to allow HydroD WASIM to run. There will be some warnings regarding the section model um, like this. You can simply ignore them. The next step is to set up the WASIM solve analysis. Here we can select the wave components body motions, and auxiliary nodal forces generated from SEMA coupled analysis. Here in the regular wave set, you can uh, select the wave components that's just generated from SEMA. And if we go back to WASIM solve analysis, um, you will find the place to define the motion files, which is the motion generated from SEMA coupled analysis. Also, we need to select the uh, auxiliary load of forces uh, generated from the couple analysis. You can define the files here. As I mentioned in the webinar, some extra parameters are also needed for this method. You can find this input box under WASIM solve analysis or the input tab. So the first uh, parameters IF2T equal to 1 is actually the switch to enable this new method. The next three is to specify the path of the output files from the radiation and the diffraction analysis, as you may recall. The following two um, parameters here 
is to specify the coordinate difference between the Wadham global origin and the Wasim global origin. We need this information as we still rely on Wasim to handling the Morrison law. Okay, now let's take a quick look at how response reconstruction looks like in Hydro D. First, we still need to have a Wadam analysis to generate the files that are needed for the pre computation part. But please note that this time we do not need to select the execute Wadam analysis. Please also note that in the pre compute hydro model, uh, you should not include the Morrison model here, otherwise, it will report error message. If your model does include the Morrison model, as the OC4 model showed here, then you still need to use Wasim to capture those Morrison loads. Similarly, we need to set up a dummy Wasim setup analysis. You will still get those warning messages, but you can simply ignore them. Next, let's move to the Wasim solve analysis for Morrison only. Um, this time, we need to specify the hydro model that include Morrison models. Otherwise, there is no place to capture those Morrison nodes. Um, similarly, uh, we also need to specify the motion time series files that are generated from the SEMA coupled analysis. But this time, uh, we don't need the auxiliary forces um, that created from SEMA. We can just keep it blank here. Similar to load reconstruction method, we also have a switch here. This F2T equal to zero and the Morrison load only equal to true. Enables Wasim to generate the Morrison line loads only. Okay, this is all I want to share for those two methods in Hydro D. In SESAM, we use Trina for modeling. Here is our example, the AMULF delta floater. The substructure has already been modeled. Here's the mass. There is a simplified rotor nacelle uh, point mass up here. This is being used as our structural model. So it has a mesh already prepared with some fine mesh areas. We'll do some screening and hotspot analysis. For the purpose of fatigue analysis, we have defined a couple of hotspots in this example. In this corner here, we define it here with this dialog in Genie. We select some SN curves that are relevant. There's also here support for setting up the multi directional fatigue analysis covering non proportional loading. Uh, this requires input of several SN curves. In addition to these hotspots, elements are exported for screening. Uh, so automatically are only those elements next to welds exported. Both of these um, hotspot and the screening data are exported to JSON files that are later being picked up by SESAM core. For the purpose of buckling, there is automatic detection and creation of the buckling panels. After the setup, in Hydro D has been completed and the files exported for the pre compute operation. We enter Sesame Win Manager, which is our tool focusing on both fixed and floating offshore wind turbine analysis. First step here is to pick up the structural model, the mesh we saw in Genie, and this demo focus on the response reconstruction method. You can give some additional info. And then over here, we are picking up the output from Hydro D for the pre-compute operation. We are also providing the nodal points for the mooring forces and where the tower force is uh, connected. They may also be given Morrison uh, elements here. Next step is then actually running the pre-compute unit response. Uh, operation creating all those uh, results that will be used later. This is a one-time operation and it's not 
really related to the DLCs over here that comes in the next step. So after running the pre-compute um, step, we can go to the response reconstruction and we also the post-processing is integrated. But focusing on the response reconstruction, then for each DLC given here, in this case, the SEMA files, this is picking up the time histories uh, from the coupled analysis, SEMA in this case, uh, that will be the input uh, when doing the response reconstruction, where we come kind of combining the results from the coupled analysis with a previously computed unit response, and then completing the new results and also with the integrated post-processing, which has been defined over here. Here we can run a screening or hotspot check. In this case, we run the screening. And then over here, we are doing the uh, fatigue damage result aggregation over all the selected uh, DLCs and load cases. We can see the results listed as a table here, various types of results. And we can also have them uploaded to Sesame Insight and share those results. The results can be directly uploaded from Sesame Wind Manager to Sesame Insight and shared with others. So it could look something like this. Here we see the screening results. They have all of the model, but that's because the elements are so large that kind of all of them are next to a weld. But if we zoom into the fine mesh areas, like this one, we'll see that Genie has automatically kind of selected the elements only close to the welds and exported them. So we're not really running any screening for welds on those other elements. Similarly, for hotspot fatigue results. We can look into them here. We zoom in, we got two of our hotspots here. Look at the first one. Look at all the details. This is for the multidirectional fatigue analysis. And we see here the damage accumulation for the various contributions on both sides of the element. Here comes a quick demo of um, SESAM with flexible workflows using Python and one workflow. This example is based on one of our tutorials uh, that's provided for you. In this case here, we're using or showing this in Jupyter Notebook, but you can use any tool you want. First uh, part here is just a description. Some text and pictures, uh, helping the user to run this tool. Next step, setting up files and folders, some predefined paths and so. In one interesting aspect here is the we can control the cloud run. So just by changing this variable, it will run all these analysis in the cloud instead. If you already have a registered account, makes it easy to, to scale, seamless. Next step here, we are reading all the DLCs from a spreadsheet. It can be an Excel spreadsheet, a CSV file, somehow a dictionary defined in any way. That's read with the start and stop times of the various parts of the workflow. Uh, all the details, whatever you need to um, control your analysis and the workflow. It's easily read. You can have different parameters for each of the DLCs. That's your kind of control spreadsheet. Next step, the tasks for each DLC. So that's actually setting up the, let's say the real workflow, uh, which pro programs to run uh, at what times, and in what, what's the sequence. So we define a sequence here. In this case, we're first running some WASIM, we're running SESTRA, we're running some core. Uh, you can easily um, make your own workflows here. And for each DLC that's run in here, it will automatically pick up the data defined previously or imported here. 
what was the definition of the tasks than the actual execution of this command, run managed commands in parallel, um, asynchronous. Uh, it's same command whether you run in cloud or locally. It will start all this analysis for you um, and return results to you when uh, when completed. There's also some quick check here that um, different parts of the analysis um, uh, complete successfully uh, and a quick reporting of that. All of this can be uh, customized as you want. Then next step, just some simple customized um, post processing, showing the result uh, reaction forces uh, based on the Sestra. And finally, some custom buckling um, results post processing. So we have system core calculate the usage factors, and then in here we loop over all the load cases, uh, time steps, uh, and different panels, and report the worst of the worst results in this uh, single table. Just to give you an example um, and what it could look like with your own flexible workflows.